Welcome again to the Sunday Guerrilla Men's Bible Study. I'm Brother Thomas Lee Harris III, and we're continuing in our study that we have entitled Bored to Death, Get Busy for Life. And we're deep into the second part of the title of Get Busy for Life. In the last segment, we, we, we dug into blessing, and at the end of that segment, I promised to, to, to speak more on blessing and to go into a little, into healing. Because to get busy for life, those are some of the components of an abundant life. But it's also, I think I try to hammer in what it is to be blessed, that a blessed is not necessarily a Mercedes Benz. Um, blessing doesn't mean that you got a million dollars in the bank. It doesn't have to mean that. And we use the comparison of the children of Israel when, when they were going through the wilderness. They were led in the wilderness by God and we made it clear that, that God only blesses. And what we want to try to maintain is the, the importance of being obedient to God despite the, the circumstances that are around us. Because it, it's crystal clear now that um, good people die. Godly people pass on. In the, the fifth chapter of Matthew talks about that, matter of fact, I'll go there. I, I don't like to. Fifth chapter of Matthew, verse 45, Matthew 5, 45. Matthew, I start at 44, and it says, But I say to you, love your enemies, bless those who curse you, do good to those who hate you, and pray for those who spitefully use you and persecute you, that you may be sons of your Father in heaven, for he makes the sun rise on evil and on good, and he sends rain on the just and on the unjust. Amen? And that's, I have a lot of favorite scriptures, that's one of my favorite, that he, he, he reigns, it rains on the just and the unjust. And the power of the just one is he has the, the wisdom to get an umbrella. But life goes on. It, it's how you, you tackle or what source of help you call upon in the times of adversity, in your rainy season. Your, your, your rainy day. Are you still godly? And that's why, this, you know, the verse before that, it says, you know, you know, bless those, 44 says, love your enemies, bless those who curse you, you know. In, in my physical man, that sounds absolutely ludicrous. But Jesus, in that entire chapter <clears throat> of Chapter 5 in Matthew, Jesus talks about the blessings. And he talks about that the righteous will be persecuted. I'll jump back up to chapter 5, verse 10. It says, Blessed are those who persecute, wait, blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. You see? So everything isn't. While you're being blessed, everything isn't balloons and whistles and happy, happy. You know, I want to give more clarity, clarity to the blessing. And, and I came up with a, 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 almost not a better definition, but a more appropriate definition for the blessing. My blessing is anything that God provides for me. Wherever God has me, I'm blessed. Um, jump to Philippians, the book of Philippians. Yeah, verse uh, Philippians chapter 4. Verse 11, 4 verse 11. Not that, and Paul is speaking, and he says, not that I speak in regard to need, for I have learned 
in whatever state I am to be content. Verse 12 says, I know how to be abased and I know how to be abound. That means he knows how to be low or high, rich or poor. Everywhere and in all things I have learned both to be full and to be hungry, both to abound and to suffer need. I can do all things through Christ which strengthens me. And I think we've, we've misused that. I can do all things to Christ who, who strengthens me. We, A lot of the prosperity, the pain, <clears throat> excuse me, the pain of that prosperity teaching for, for so long without the obedience of God kind of put the emphasis on that I can only do, I can do all the good things through Christ who strengthens me. And Paul makes it clear here, if God has me in the wilderness and I'm hungry, I, I'm still holy. Right? I'm still trusting in God. I can do that if that's my season that God, that God has me at. Whether on top of the hill or in the valley, wherever God has me at. <clears throat> whether it's freshman or senior year. Whether it's president of the company or still working in the mailroom. You understand? Wherever God has me at, that's when the scripture says, I can do all things. I can deal with that. Um, let's go to Ephesians 3.20. I think another scripture that's sometimes pulled out. And it says, Now unto him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think according to the power that works in us. So, it, this, this, this power of God starts within us. This blessing of God has to start within us. The healing from God, of God, has to start in us. I know we all want the physical blessing, but I know one of the most powerful preachers I hear on the radio, and she's in a wheelchair. Just, matter of fact, what's today? Um, Sunday, September, I think today's the 19th. There was, there was a terrible crash in, in New York City. A van of, of, of church members and a bishop, I think on their way to a church service. That's that rain on the just and the unjust. Life happens to, to all. So if I could be on the sidelines saying, oh, they got cursed, they were doing something wrong, no. The ultimate plan, <clears throat> one, isn't about me. God knows what he's doing all the time. So we can't get caught up in the physical so much. You, you may not ever have that four or five bedroom house. I keep saying it. Because if you don't have the ultimate blessing, which is the right heart <clears throat> with God, the spirit of God in you, it's all in vain. And truly, you could run around the world and, and manifest or try to manifest for yourself or join on to other spirits running around just to get that house. But all that in a few years is gone anyway. A lifetime is over. And then life truly begins, we see. This book has revealed to us. <clears throat> but it, it, even if you look at Jesus, Jesus was born to Mary and at the time they were <clears throat> um, the Jews at the time were still up under the heavy hand of the Roman Empire so God's people throughout the, script, the scriptures isn't I haven't seen ever where they were the ruling political power of the world that's why we have to be careful about America, America. We're obedient to God. Bible, Bible, Bible before America, America, America. Because the ruling powers of the world have never, have never been based on this. All on this, obedient to this. They making up their own rules as they go along. Borrowing from tenets or, or parts of the Bible. So for my, my, my blessing ultimate blessing that it, it comes from within number one healing 
comes from within. <clears throat> when you look at the people that Jesus healed, go through the, the, the Bible, heal man's eyes and, 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 and ears, and the man was paraplegic. The story clearly says that they recognized who he was. Jairus' daughter, they recognized who, who Jesus was in the heart. They recognized God. And in these, these end days, I'm going to go to John real quick. The last chapter of John. And not, not the last chapter, the verse chapter 20. It's 21 chapters in John. We're going to chapter 20, verse 29. And Jesus is talking to Thomas, and, and Thomas is an unbeliever. He, he, this is after Jesus had, had been crucified, and he was still showing up making appearances to the, uh, the apostles, and John was just an unbeliever. Um, verse, I'll start at 27. And he said to Thomas, not John, it was Thomas. He said to Thomas, reach your finger here and look at my hands and reach, reach your hand here and put it into my side. And do not be unbelieving, but believing. And Thomas answering said to him, my Lord and my God. <clears throat> verse 29, the heavy. And Jesus said, Thomas, because you have seen me, you have believed. Blessed are those who have not seen and, have, and yet have believed. You see, we are in a generation where we may not see anybody get healed and get out of a wheelchair. You see, the physical may not manifest because the importance is on the spiritual. In the end times, we're running out of time. And the spiritual accountability is what's really going to count. We got to be right in the spirit first. Amen? Get right in the spirit first. God bless you.